Hello, my name is Diedrich Martin, and I'm the current superintendent for Caledonia Community Schools. And I want to speak to the Caledonia community regarding what's going on in our school community as we deal with the coronavirus or COVID-19 during these unprecedented times. First and foremost, I would encourage everyone to routinely visit our school website at www.calschools.org for the latest and greatest accurate information with resources, supports, and information in our school community that you can use. Second, I wanted to answer some questions that have been reoccurring or things that I believe are on everyone's mind. And one is about the closure itself. How long uh, is this closure and if it will be extended? Right now, under the governor's order, all schools in Michigan are closed for a three week period of time. This just so happened to coincide or in one week prior to our spring break and recognizing that a lot of families had plans that maybe they couldn't get out of as well as our staff members and not knowing what we were getting ourselves into at the time, we made the decision uh, in our district and throughout the county to close schools until April 13th. We are making preparations and expect to see our kids on April 13th. However, we are aware of rumors and speculation that schools may be closed even longer. If and when that becomes a reality, we will provide new and updated information directly to our parents via email. We will put it on our website, which we continue to update, uh, and we probably even add it to Facebook, and you might even see another video from me. Sorry about that. Uh, but right now, we do have all facilities closed with the exception of Monday through Thursday, 10 o'clock through 1230, our central office will be open in a limited capacity. By that, I mean that most people will be working remotely, but our central office will have a small number of staff members here uh, to answer and return phone calls or direct those uh, voice messages to the appropriate administrator so that we can respond as needed. Um, emails you can send anytime and we will direct that to the appropriate person to respond. And we also have some basic business functions that need to occur. So our doors will not be open to anyone uh, in the public because we don't want to overexpose or risk um, our staff in terms of them being able to be ready and prepare for our students return on April 13th. Um, and we want to practice social distancing, but there will be some uh, business office functions within the building, but most of our staff will be working in a remote situation and coming in on an as needed basis. This gives our, our facilities time for a thorough cleaning by our maintenance and operations department. And so we appreciate the diligent work that they're doing as they get our schools prepared for the eventual return to school. The other question that we have is why isn't schools uh, being mandated to provide online learning opportunities? And so we want to address that uh, head on. We realize that probably most and all colleges are doing online learning, uh, but the fundamental difference is they're serving uh, adults and we're serving kids ranging from four up to 26 years old with a variety of learning needs. We have some students who are uh, super accelerated and, and very intelligent and they fly through any challenge we put before them. And we have some students with some very unique and special learning needs um, with second language learning needs and supports. Um, and it is, we don't have a platform that can uh, and adequately address in a quality way the learning experience that's comparable to kids showing up to school. So with that being stated, we have directed our staff to provide resources, which you can find on our website um, as enrichment opportunities for learning and emotional supports. It's divided into two forms. Uh, one pre-K through fifth grade, the other one secondary, and then emotional supports and links and activities for uh, anyone, everyone of all ages, including uh, parents. We want to help our parents and help our students keep their minds sharp. Uh, we want them to stay uh, 
in an emotionally good place. And so we encourage you to visit our website and take a look at the various enrichment opportunities and pick the one that you feel is best for you and your child. In addition to that, we have a number of teachers who have stepped up to uh, go above and beyond and provide even more uh, enrichment learning opportunities that they're sending directly to parents and students via email. In all cases, these um, opportunities are optional. It is not required. Kids will not be penalized. Um, and we ask uh, kids and parents to pick out the materials that they feel will be most useful, most appropriate, uh, but certainly uh, don't work yourself to a point of frustration because this is optional. Kids will not be penalized or graded um, downward because we realize that this is an abnormal time and not everyone is equally equipped with the electronic resources, access to consistent um, internet uh, connectivity or um, with the supports they need to be successful. And so and that a, instead of enhancing um, the inequities in our school community, we chose to do it in this approach. Uh, with all of that being said, if we need to adjust in the future, we will make some adjustments. But right now, continue to check this ongoing website, continue to look out for emails directly from your teachers or from your building administrators as they try to help families get prepared and uh, get through these times, but keep the mind and the spirit sharp. Another question we get asked quite a bit is, how long will the free meals last? The, we will be consistent with the three weeks that the governor has put out uh, in terms of schools being closed. So we, have, we are wrapping up our first week of serving free meals, and we will be serving free meals for the next two weeks. The time period has been adjusted uh, and you can find this information on our website. We serve the meals between 11 and 1 o'clock. This is free for any student who is 18 or under, and you don't have to be a student in Caledonia Community Schools. Uh, so you could be a student in another school but live in our area. That is perfectly fine. We do have some uh, students who are as old as 26 with unique special education needs. Uh, those students will also be provided free breakfast and lunch grab bag opportunities. Um, and for adults, uh, if you are in need of a low cost uh, lunch or breakfast, you can also come. Um, we would say bring cash because uh, our normal capabilities are a little bit limited, but we will make meals available for adults too, Monday through Thursday, 11 through one. And I'm happy to report at this point, we've served almost 3,500 meals to well over a thousand families in our school community. And we continue to look forward to doing that until this ban uh, of coming to school is lifted. During the week that would have been our normal spring break, we will not be serving meals unless there is an extension of the closure under the governor's order. If that change, we will make the change and we will put that information, updated information on our website. The other questions that I get quite a bit is what about uh, the Board of Education meetings and various other school district functions and meetings? I can say that all school meetings of any type has been canceled until we return to school. And then the meetings that need to be rescheduled will be rescheduled. The only meetings that will occur is uh, IEP meetings for special education students um, as required and as necessary. In this case, I would encourage you to contact your building level administrator the teacher or the director of special education if you have a question specifically about your child's IEP needs or an upcoming meeting. Otherwise, any uh, dialogue with DOC and public meetings for the months of March have been canceled and will be rescheduled if necessary. We are making provisions that if there is an extension of school closures, we will start having board meetings again in March in a viral fashion and also done in a way where the public will be able to view and to uh, make public comment as they would at any regular board meeting. 
Another question that we are getting is, where do you go for accurate information? And we realize in, uh, in this world, you can find information anywhere. Uh, it could be in a tweet, it could be in a personal Facebook post. Um, but we would say that the most accurate information will be either one, found directly on our website, two, on our Facebook, or three, emailed directly to our parents. And we are updating this information a lot more frequently than we normally would since we are closed. So we would say continue to go and check our website for the latest and greatest updates and changes to our school district functioning. And also, we will come back and answer questions in a frequently asked question format, such as what I'm doing today, um, because the situation continues to evolve. And in some cases, we put up information on our website uh, one day and three days later, uh, things have changed and we have to update it again. So I would say continue to frequently visit our website, uh, check out our Facebook for information and uh, be mindful to watch your emails for direct communication from myself, uh, building uh, administrators or teachers about important information as we all work through this together. Another question is what about uh, high school interims and field trips and plays and um, uh, concerts and events? We made the decision to cancel all field trips and all interims at this point anticipating that we come back in April 13th and the reality that we have over 40 individualized and unique interim experiences at the high school level that has been uh, in plan in, uh, and, and worked on by our teachers since last fall. The reality is in this uncertain environment, we could not ensure that we would be able to pull off such um, planning with such short notice when we get back in April. And there's still the question of what happens if this is extended um, and we started to make dates and plans that we don't even know at this point we could honor. And so we realize that that is disheartening to many, um, but uh, when we return back to school, we will make determinations on what events and activities will be rescheduled and uh, in some cases, some things we will not be able to reschedule unless school is extended well into the summer. Um, and even then, it may be difficult to make all of those things occur um, in terms of the month that we have been out of school. Last but not least, wanted to speak to um, opportunities for uh, questions from the general public. And while we have tried to our best ability to answer emails and return phone calls. Uh, just the sheer volume of information that we're getting uh, every day and every hour from uh, state and federal resources and a number of educational organizations. It's made it a, a real challenge to keep up with the information flow. So as such, we're looking to do some teletown hall type meetings in the future where instead of having to come out for a dialogue with Doc and ask questions about rezoning or the upcoming bond and millage or schools, uh, we will allow that format to move on in a digital fashion. And so we are working on the logistics of that. As we get that worked out, look to hear from me directly uh, in the form of emails. Uh, we will put this information on our website and we will try to have some opportunities where you can engage with myself or other members of my administrative team so that we can do the best we can to give you the information you need as we all work through these difficult times together. But I will say this, uh, in times of great needs throughout the history of America, schools have stood up through some amazing odds, whether it was 9-11, H1N1, and a number of other uh, things, economic downturns, schools have and will continue to be a source in our community um, that is designed to help and support our community. And so at Caledonia Community Schools, we're doing our part to help you get through these difficult times. We will try to communicate accurate, timely information as soon as we have 
uh, information confirmed um, because we want to make sure that we all get through this together and we look forward to seeing you guys coming back to school, bringing, off, bringing your children uh, back to our care in April. So with that, I'm gonna sign off and look forward to talking to you again. Thanks and have a great day.